Welcome, all of you fiends, for fabulous fan fiction and also fractionally decent fan fiction. It's <laughs> <laughs> the best intro. <laughs> we are fracking? indeed. We're fan tangentially fracking. related to the Disinformed Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Michael. I'm Stephen. And welcome back to another stirring installment of Fan Friction here on the Tubes of You on a wonderful Wednesday morning. Happy hump day to everybody because it's about to get grown up in here. Ooh. No Hargrids, but uh, something's getting hard. (laughs) Uh, It's going to be some wood involved, and I'm referring to the Forbidden Forest, but uh, what are you going to do? So in case you were... ironically clarified that they're all in the seventh year, so yay for not being underage it's very important <laughs> unless you're in alabama <laughs> roll tide, tide. <laughs> <laughs> have to occasionally lob the softball up but uh, that happens in alabama a lot as well from what i understand <laughs> pushing rope anywho i'm sorry three, <laughs> sorry, three people in alabama who are really upset at this podcast and they don't appreciate <laughs> it and i'm fairly certain conrad thompson's not one of them but just in case appreciate you connie Okay, so what we typically do on our podcast is we delve into a random esoteric topic and then we lie about it. It is delightful and vastly entertaining, I assure you. Just take my word for it. Or you could perhaps tune in every Marvelous Monday on your preferred provider app and check out our new episodes because they air weekly. We are cresting into and have just begun our third season. And uh, whew how time flies when you're you know gritting your teeth and waiting for something to fall out of you but uh, (laughs) it's a lot of fun and so in the course of our doing this michael did of course present us with the world's worst fan fiction in episode 25 my immortal and we have been a fool to its folly ever since this is now the fifth time we have touched my immortal and we have become increasingly efficient at it (laughs) it is the gift that keeps on giving indeed and so this is presumably what might very well be our final installment it's certainly aptly titled if it is but this is the erudite and actually literarily informed version of my immortal called farewell my immortal And uh, it's been a lot of fun through the first three chapters. And so we are extremely excited to get to chapter four, I'm sure. Oh, yes. And it is uh, Maxwell the fifth is the author. I realize I have been remiss in my duties previously and giving credit where it is due, but it is always contained in the show notes. And uh, thank you for writing such a marvelously passable work for us to be able to delve into. And we hope that we drive some traffic your way Uh, as a creator. If you have more things, I would certainly be keen on checking them out. And I plan to later on because this has been very tasty, tasty (laughs) content for Mr. Michael here. But uh, no further ado necessary, I hope. But if you enjoy what you hear here, Michael has got some instructions for you, I think. Smash the like button, ring the bell, uh, leave a comment, and hit subscribe. Oh, my dear God. The planets have aligned. (laughs) So all I we need to coherent. do is just do this like eight times in a row every <laughs> evening. And then, you know, law of diminishing returns. Eventually, you're going to get it right. Huh. You know, the old monkeys with typewriters. <laughs> I am that monkey. <laughs> I'm going to oh. shake a spear. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite part of 2001 A Space Odyssey, just so you know. The opening scene. With the Are monkeys. they right, Hamlet? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the monolith. <laughs> i mean that's how i write my episodes so (laughs) when you're not flinging poo at everyone in your general blast radius yes there's a reason why i can't show the wall behind the uh desktop so yikes (laughs) it's a creative process there's a process that's all i'll say creating something certainly (laughs) byproduct but uh, all right i think that's a preamble aside and thank you all for enduring what has occurred thus far but uh, here we are you both ready yes 
Well, this ahead. is the ultimate installment of this particular edition, I hate to say. They they don't overstay their welcome. They just give you a sous-son, a little taste, if you will, of what it might have been if someone uh, capable had written this story. Keeps me up at night. <laughs> sure Indeed, the world just ain't right. Mm -hmm. John's laughing somewhere, having heard that. So, <laughs> <clears throat> All right, here we Maybe are. Rest in peace. <laughs> good night sweet prince <laughs> our dearest condolences to former podcast host john and his family <laughs> if only if i had any video editing software i would just end at in memorum john <laughs> in in memorum huh in memorable <laughs> in memorandum in memorandum he actually has a song called memorandum so i think that's appropriate there you go all right, here we are. We, most, well, a portion of the Disinformed podcast are happy to present to you. Farewell, my immortal. Chapter four. To wake up from a dream, to be forcibly removed from a fantasy, understandably comes with the sensation of questioning the reality of said fantasy. Ebony was awoken from a dream of the loud beating of music and the louder beating of hearts. Romance, as glimpsed through the reflection of stage lights, off of striking, glittering, enamored eyes. Subvocal understandings and the touch of a hand against feverish hand. Now, Gentler music hummed through motionless speakers inside the dim interior of Draco Malfoy's car. Draco was catching furtive glances of Ebony, who must have appeared starstruck, confused and blushing. Ebony was trying as hard as she possibly could to grasp something on the edge of her reality. There's something wrong with the inside of Draco's car. But how would she know that? She'd only been in Draco's car once, and she hadn't been spending the time studying the interior design. This strange fear expressed itself through Draco's occasional peaks. Something mischievous in his eyes reaffirmed that something was amiss. Something Draco knew. Hey, Draco? Ebony? He chuckled under his breath. His eyebrow raised confidently, as if congratulating himself for getting Ebony's name right this time. What's up? Was all Ebony knew to how to ask. The question she had that she couldn't ask was, Why do I feel so uncomfortable riding in your car with you? And why do I want to leave so badly? Nothing at all. Draco said with the infuriating self-assuredness that came with coy, intentional misinformation. By the way, we have a podcast that does that weekly. It's very <laughs> I wanted to say that one, the, the forest, uh, or the poor information, the poor informed from last, uh, last week, but I did not. Well, speak for yourself, if you can. Uh, no, I cannot. Draco said with the infuriating self-assuredness that came with coy, intentional misinformation. Ebony decided to not push him. The feeling of anxiety was real, but the justification wasn't. She wasn't confident enough to force anything. If she let herself relax just for a moment, content with what she knows, which is that she's coming home from the best date of her entire life with a boy she's head over heels for. <laughs> then maybe she'll recognize what bothered her in the first place. It could be the natural strangeness of being in a flying car, a new experience for her, or it could be the simple fact that they weren't going back to Hogwarts. No, wait, that was it. They were slowing down and veering off from the path to Hogwarts. Ebony's mind jumped. No wonder it felt so strange. It wasn't the car that was the problem. It was where the car was going. Ebony tried to talk herself down from the edge of what seemed to be a horrifying reality by justifying the weird, circuitous path any way she could. Perhaps they'd need to sneak in. That makes sense. No, it doesn't. 
by slowing down to a crawl near the canopy of the forbidden forest. They're not that hidden, and they're going far too slowly to reach Hogwarts itself by morning. And the looks that Draco keeps throwing at her, there's something strange going on. Draco? Uh, um, where are you going? Don't worry about it. Danger! Draco, in the time it took to speak, one sentence became a dangerous stranger. Panic spread through Ebony's body like a freezing wind. Her blood went cold as the car slowly started to lower itself directly into the forbidden forest. Ebony had not brought a wand. Or she did? No, wait, did she? Did she leave it at Hogsmeade? Why would Ebony ever leave Hogwarts without a wand? Not only for the aspect of danger that she now finds herself in, but for, for convenience's sake. She had to have her wand on her. She just had to. She can see Draco's in his pocket. But he's getting out of the car. Too late to reach for it. Relax. A voice deep inside <laughs> Ebony's body called out. Not her voice. The chill increased, but the panic calmed. A surly voice that wasn't hers reached out inside the deeper recesses of her consciousness, and it said, Relax. This is silly, spoke the voice. You're in no mortal peril. You left your want in your opposite pocket. Go to him, quickly, lest... Lest was the last word she heard from the voice. Seemed like solid advice. She picked herself up from the car, taking care not to close the door behind her. Draco? She called out softly as she left the car, stepping out into the eerily quiet, dangerous growth of the forbidden forest. I had fun tonight, Draco said, approaching her. His hands were empty, but she couldn't see his wand. And I wanted to... What the fuck are we doing here, Draco? What is this? What? Draco sputtered, taken wholly aback by Ebony's outcry. I don't know what you think you're doing with me, Draco, but I've got my wand on me, and I'm not afraid to use it. I, uh, no, I bet you're not. Draco exclaimed, hands upward. <laughs> That's, wait. What, what are you? Ebony clutched the hem of her robe, ready to reach inside and attack at a moment's notice. Draco held his hands higher, apparently cognizant that Ebony definitely had the drop on him. It took an extra long few seconds for Ebony re herself to realize that at this moment, Draco was effectively in more danger than she was. Der she ruined it. Draco, I... Draco took a few steps toward her, hands lowering slightly. Panic gave way to embarrassment. Ebony's arms began to relax uncomfortably. Draco, I I'm sorry, I... Magical is the word muggles would use. Having lived in their world for as long as she had, it was the word that came to Ebony's mind as well. Magical. Not in the practical sense that Draco would have known it. Not even in the whimsical sense that she could so vividly recall during her first day at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. The sights of floating candles, the sounds of children playing, and the overpowering smell of cinnamon and butter. This kiss was a different kind of magical the way Draco's lips pressed against hers, the way that Ebony felt her mind shoot out of her body until all that was left was the sensuous touch of something new and something exciting and warm. Her mind would not return to her when Draco's hands began to slip between her burning shoulder and her bra strap. She would be just as careless and free as she was before the moment she found her head cradled in the nape of his neck, feeling the heat rising off his naked chest. It was awkward but warm, clumsy but passionate. 
cats mewed in the background. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Fluffer's getting excited. I understand. We all are. Oh, yes. He's having a very good time over here. Ooh, well. <laughs> Ebony's first time would not be her greatest time, not surrounded by the mists and cold of the Forbidden Forest, but it would always be her first time. Ebony's mind would only return to her as her grip on the forest ground beneath her started to ease. Her knees would reach up to the robes Draco had draped over them. The cool wind started to blow against Ebony's blazing forehead, and that same voice creeping up from somewhere inside of her she couldn't be quite touch. <laughs> creeping up from somewhere inside of her she couldn't quite touch, somewhere very separate from her would wrench itself from the darkness and whisper into her ear. Whore. Ebony's mind was snapped back to attention, the frozen panicking body of Draco Malfoy still arching over her, his head still resting on her chest. His eyes were wide and his teeth were clenched. Did he hear the voice too? This is a deeply disappointing position to find you in, both of you. Spoke a voice much clearer than what she'd heard before, much clearer but all too real and too present. Behind Draco's shivering shoulder was the stoic and ill-mannered face of Albus Dumbledore. And that, friends and listeners, is the end of this particular installment. Oh. Farewell, my immortal. Ended Farewell. all too soon, sadly. Definitely agreed. And Could have used a couple more chapters to finish it all off. At uh, least. I guess I need you know, to start writing. Like 38 more chapters? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we still haven't gotten to Morty McFly or... You know, time traveling autos and uh, machine and guns, Velofmort, Snap and Lupin, Tom Masticating, <laughs> Pederasty. Can't forget, can't forget the masticating. Certainly not. Yes. We all do it Black daily. Mailing people orgies in the black and the Great Hall. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, by the way, we also want to indicate that we have no intention of kink shaming anyone here. And uh, sex is a beautiful, natural, and zesty enterprise. Ooh. And uh, we certainly would encourage everyone to engage when you're ready and always be safe. Mm. Bring your wand. <laughs> and your want. Yes. Want <laughs> is very important in sex. Bring your want and your wand. And your Dumbledore, if you're so inclined. <laughs> As long as it isn't in a very disappointing position. Well, <laughs> I think that is uh, sufficient to get everybody all worked into a rich foamy lather and uh, end before you can really get anything substantial from it. And how like uh, entanglements with teenagers. Yes. Anyway, not that I would know. No one <laughs> has uh, any experience. Nope. With that. Sure. Nope. Okay. Not at all. Uh, mm hmm. Anywho, <laughs> we have shows and you yeah. like them, or yes, at least I hope please. so. I hope, yeah. same. Yes, and if you do, you should, uh, you know, do the things Michael told you earlier. You know, smash, grab, comment, subscribe, and uh, hopefully you uh, you do all those things in a particular order. And of course, remember every Marvelous Monday new podcast episodes fleeing from your preferred provider app that is the Disinformed Podcast. And of course, we're back here on the Tubes of You every wonderful Wednesday, 10 a.m. Mountain Time for more of this literary nonsense. And uh, I shudder at the thought of the depths that we may be plumbing soon enough because Michael's got plans. Ooh. And the last time he did, I wound up being a very lustful barge. <laughs> and poor Stephen was a canal that uh, had no rights to be filled with oil and, uh, you know, longshore. Sailors. Yes, yes. Before we leave, uh, Stephen, since we have a guest on the show, if you would so mind as show us the cat. 
that has uh, been... He's wandering around, slightly out of reach at the moment. I was going to say, Michael, obviously you haven't spent much time around felines if you think that they are so easily corralled. That's that's fair. It, it has been quite a time. Since I I've mean, unless you've got one in your lap, it's it's very <laughs> difficult to get one when, when headphones and, uh, you know, uh, any true. random yeah, bits of bit furniture cornered in my current setup there isn't a lot of room to get up yes. and move around with the box in yes. <laughs> practically a prison over here <laughs> between the boxes prison. and the books it's not much room for anything it's also a prison for your mind Ooh. mind palace except less ritzy <laughs> Well, only if you're eating other people, I suppose. But, uh, well, ladies and German folks, thank you for being here. That is going to wrap it up into a lustrous set of Hogwarts robes for us. And, you know, we'll see the next time that we become potheads. And uh, it may be... I'm waiting for the comment. (laughs) We appreciate your entanglements and, uh, you know, there will be Michael's address freely disseminated to those of you who have commented previously hope you enjoy the bees michael but uh Uh, anything but the bees okay how about the birds (laughs) it's fair the moon and the juna and the springa i love to sing as as my favorite actor said bees not the bees ah uh, (laughs) why is my name frankie mermaids michael because you're swimming in bitches indeed so for those of us here at disinformed fan friction this week i am kenton el dorado uh why couldn't he put the bunny back in the box i'm robert greer (laughs) and i'm daniel dove like that you give me crap for quoting like no country for old men and you're over here whipping out and just random not wicker man and God, on Nicholas air Cage, come on. <laughs> have you seen the original version of wicker man by the way no but that's actually something that i would like to see because would... it, it's actually like done really well it is uh, i would recommend it it's there are weird musical sections and it's kind and... of bizarre but christopher lee is in it and he's yes. exquisite it's really wonderful i actually greatly enjoyed it i have not seen the Nicolas Cage version it's, so when the author of the it was based off a book yes I, I believe believe so yeah when the author of the book has disavowed any sort of connection with Nicolas Cage's Wicker Man uh it it, it it's telling okay. <laughs> I watched the trailer and saw the uh the way they seg into the story and it's uh it's dramatically different from how the original film goes. So please, it's on Shutter if you're inclined, or uh, yeah. there is a VHS version that is available in the library, I happen to know, if you're inclined. <laughs> you let me know. But uh, yeah, it's well worth watching if you have a moment. And uh, okay. I've already told this to Stephen previously. So it's uh, for those of you who enjoy watching the sort of like, uh, you know, caustic relationship between Christianity and other faiths, particularly pagan faiths then uh, it's well worth investigating i assure you and that is our psa for the evening anywho thanks for being here all and i will remind you one more time that it is in fact not leviosa but leviosa